So just how do you make your Mac run faster, or at least appear faster? Well, let me show you. Welcome back to the channel. So today we kind of have a training video here, and it's more or less, how do you make your Mac faster, or at least appear faster? And I'm gonna show you what that means in a second, because it's kind of, it's one of those things where it may appear faster, it's not really doing anything to the CPU. Other times it is, so I'm gonna show you those as well. So without you know, wasting too much time here, I'm gonna go through, I think there's about 10 of them or so. So sit back and relax, and I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna show you how to make your Mac run faster, or at least appear so. All right, so number one will actually make your Mac a little bit faster. Over here, if you go up to the Apple icon up here and you go to system settings, inside of here, you're gonna open up your system settings. Up here, you wanna click or just type in login item. See that? And then click enter. Now, on my computer right here, I have a fairly new computer. I have nothing in here. This is what you want it to look like. So it says open at login. There's nothing listed there and there's nothing down here. I'll get into that in a second. This is kind of what you want your computer to look like so it runs fast. This way nothing's running in the background. As soon as you log into your computer, it doesn't automatically open things up. I have an image over here of what a bad computer would look like. Not always, but the computer that has a lot of stuff running in it, you can see it here. So what you wanna do here is if, you know, in this one, it's the same thing, login items. So all of these on this customer, or this person's computer, they're all running at startup. These are gonna be things like Alfred and Google Chrome, and depending on what you allow, these will all be running once you just log into your computer. So you wanna go in here and you can actually delete these by, you know, selecting them and clicking the little minus symbol here. And that's gonna stop them from booting up on login, or at least, you know, kind of, kind of using your resources at login. And then down here, this is allow in the background, and this is gonna be other apps that are allowed in the background. And sometimes when you install an app, it just does it. You know, you don't even realize it's happening. You can actually uncheck all of these things that you don't want running in the background. Obviously, you gotta look them through, make sure they're not needed, you might get an error later or something. But you can always go back and turn them on if you need to. But just get rid of all these things if you can, the, you know, as many as you can, and your system will run faster. All right, number two, this may actually help your system run faster also. Let's take a look at my screen. What you wanna do here is I actually have hot corners enabled, so go down into your um, launch pad here and look for the folder other, and obviously you guys know about this, but open up activity monitor right there, all right? So what this is gonna do is it's gonna give you the activity monitor of your computer, and it takes a second to load in everything. A Couple things here though. You wanna go ahead and click on CPU, and inside of here, you're gonna see a whole bunch of different things in here. But a lot of this stuff, you'll see apps that are running and stuff like that, so when you're using apps that are running, some of your favorite apps, let's say you download them from the internet or from you know the Apple store, you can go in here and check and you want to make sure that it's not using huge portions of your CPU. When your computer's running slow, it could be an app that's causing your CPU to run really slow. So by going in here under CPU up here and looking for what is using most of your CPU during those slowdown periods, you can kind of identify that app and then decide if it's just a one-time thing or if you should remove that app or replace it with a different app. Maybe it's just causing too much stress in your computer. You can do the same thing with memory. So here's CPU up here. You can click on memory and the same thing. See in here, you can basically go through this whole list and you can see that, you know, some things don't make a lot of sense, but you can see Safari, for instance, is using 114 megabytes of RAM. So it's the same thing here. If you notice that applications that you don't even use that much or you just don't care about that much are just taking up a lot of your resources. Sometimes that can be a gigabyte, can be a lot of your RAM resources, or even your CPU can be 50% of your CPU. You may want to think twice about having those, first of all, open. You can shut them down, obviously. But then also, do you even need those? And maybe find an alternative program or something, because those could be what's causing the slowdowns in most of the cases. All right, I think a lot of people know this, but just in case you don't, if you get down to just a little bit of space on your, your SSD and your, your system here, it's gonna slow down the system considerably. You usually want at least minimum double the RAM. So if you have you know, 16 gigs of RAM, you need at least 32 gigs of free space. 32 gigs of RAM, you need 64 gigabytes of free space before things just really crash down as far as how much SSD space you have. You need some SSD space. So to clear it out, you go up, to your, up here again to the Apple. Uh, up here to the Apple monitor. You click about, about this Mac in here, and then click more info right here. See it there? So we're gonna click on that. And then down here, you wanna go in here down to storage settings. It's right there. So I'm gonna open up this storage settings. Inside of here, it's gonna show you how much of your, your actual space, SSD space here has been used. The cool thing about this, this part of the, the you know, program is you can go in here and you can really identify what's being used exactly where, and you can delete things to free up that space. So if you look over here, under applications, for example, see it here? Click on this little eye, it's information, click on that. Now watch what happens. It lists all of your programs in here and what, how many, you know, what's the file size? of them so you can see exactly the file sizes very easily if you're not using something you can just highlight it here and delete it right there see that so it's easy to delete the program you reclaim that space back 
Same thing, let me go ahead and click done. Same thing in here if you wanna go into documents. This is using, you know, usually the most. I have a kind of a fairly new Mac here, so it's only 16 gigabytes. But if you click on this again, it's gonna give you all of your biggest files. Look at this, 7.8 or 7.18 gigabytes, all the way down the list to your smallest files. And so you can go in here and just select one and then just go ahead and delete it also. And you're deleting these, you know, make sure you, once you delete it here, it doesn't actually go into the recycle bin, so be very careful. Only delete the things you want there. But you can delete it right from there and then it's gone forever. So keep in mind that this is a good way to go in, remove that space, and make sure you always have, you know, like I always say, I think 50 gigabytes is a fair number in most cases, but make sure you have about that much space. Otherwise, you may see some slowdowns for sure, and you may not know what it's from, but it's usually from having that lack of SSD space. When it needs to use swap and stuff, it's kind of slowing everything down. So just keep that in mind. It's very important to keep some buffer. All right, here's another one. So if you actually have a MacBook like this, not an iMac over here, but a MacBook, you can go over and up at the very top, you're gonna to see like a battery icon. If you click on that battery icon and you go to battery settings, so battery settings, you're gonna open up a screen and inside of here, you're gonna see a couple of things, but at the very top, it depends on the OS and the computer that you're on, you're gonna see this low power mode and it says never. Well, obviously some people have this enabled. So in here, you can go to never, always, um, only battery and then only on power adapter. So you can go into a low power mode. You wanna make sure that's off, all right? Now again, this is for maximum performance of your computer, but if you have low power mode on, it's usually gonna give you less resources, it's gonna be slower overall. So I always check that on MacBooks and stuff if you're having issues. Not that that's the main cause, but if you have that checked and you're out of the other resources as well, it's only gonna cause even more problems for you. So just always check that. All right, this next one's gonna give you more of the impression that you're making your computer faster. It's not so much gonna be making it faster. Let me show you what this means. So again, you know, obviously you wanna go up to your Apple icon system settings, and then here's the system settings. On the left-hand side, you wanna to go to desktop and dock right here, see it there, click on that. So once we're in here, there's a couple things you wanna do that you can actually turn off. So before I do that, let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's see this, this is my, obviously my settings. If I click minimize, watch what happens. It's gonna kinda of like do this animation. It's gonna slink off the screen, watch this. See how it like got small and just slinked off there? So that's what it does. Let me just do it one last time here. Watch that. It kind of does an animation there. So what you can do is that doesn't really use a lot of resources, but it appears slower just because it takes a little bit longer. So once you go in here and you go to desktop and dock, there's animate opening applications. See that right there? You can uncheck that right there. And then also up here where it says minimize windows using genie effect, go ahead and you can do scale effect there, right? It's going to make it a little bit faster. Now watch what happens. If I go ahead and click this again, it just, boom, it's gone. It's, it's way quicker. Let me just do that one last time. So it's not doing that genie effect that's going, boom, it's done. So it just moves way quicker. It just seems like your computer's a lot faster. All right, and another thing you can do as well, this is kind of a trick setting. So if you just want no animations at all, like those weird animations all over the Mac, you can do that with an accessibility setting. So if you go over here, again, you open up your settings, go to accessibility this time right there, accessibility, click on it. And then I think you wanna to go to display, see it right there? So go into display. Now inside of here, let me just see if I can even find it. It's actually right here, reduce motion, see it right there? So you can go ahead and click that. That's gonna turn reduce motion on. So you're not gonna turn it off, you're turning reduce motion on. So that's gonna help with you know any type of motion and things that are on the screen that happen, like those effects and stuff. It's just gonna really clean things up and make it so that it's not really doing those things. So it kinda of turns everything off at once. It's, it's one of those things where you just don't even notice it that often until it actually happens. So, but it's something good to have off just to get that little bit more impression that your computer's faster. All right, another thing everyone should know about this, but I think the new Mac users don't. So let's say you open up a window just like Safari or something like this, and then you go ahead and shut the little X up here. See up here, I'm gonna shut that X. A lot of people think it's actually shut down the program. It's not, so if you go down here and you look, it's all in your kind of menu bar down here, your dock, you're gonna see these little dots next to things. See that little dot there? There's a dot under notes, because I have notes open. So even though I just closed that, it's actually still using resources on the system, all right? So you could have a whole bunch of things open and you never close them if you don't know what you're doing. So here, all you have to do is you wanna go ahead and right click and you can quit the app there. So if you right click on, click on it and quick clip, <laughs> and you click, quit, that's like a tongue twister, um, you see that that's gone now. So it's not actually using those resources any longer. 
Actually, that's a pretty good trick, right? So you can open that up again, and there you go. So now we have Safari open. Now it's open again. The other thing you have to be very weary about is, is opening up multiple tabs, all right? So if you go in here and I open up all these different tabs, and, and, and let's just say I minimize this now, all right? So you're going to go ahead and minimize this, and that's down there. You're not even thinking about it. Once again, if I go into, let me go ahead and go into Activity Monitor, and I go into Memory here, you're going to see eventually wherever I can find those tabs at, right here. See these things right here? There's one, two, three, four, five. They're all using 71 megabytes a piece. 71 megabytes, and this can get way higher. Some websites can go up to like three, four, five hundred megabytes, almost a half gigabyte of RAM that they're actually using on each tab. So it's like having an application open, just having that tab open. Same thing, it, it, it'll actually use CPU memory as well. So if you go in here, you're going to find strewn out through here. Each of those tabs is going to be using some of your CPU. Not a lot because you're not doing anything. It's mostly going to be RAM. So some things I recommend is some sites that are very RAM heavy. You can go to a website. You can check it out here to see how much RAM it's using. And uh, a lot of times it's using way more RAM than you actually think it should be. And those are some sites you may want to avoid if your computer is really low on RAM and it has bad resources because it's just sucking too much away from your normal workflow. And maybe you have to change the website or just don't leave that tab open. Always check that. It's going to help it run just slightly faster. Oh yeah, and just a quick thing. So way down here on the dock, like I just mentioned, things that have the little dots here are using resources. You have to shut them down, not to use the resources. Well, don't forget up here on the menu bar. So up here in the menu bar, I have applications like this one. It's running up there. Now it's not in the dock, it's up on the menu bar, but it is still running. So some of these things do use RAM and resources and CPU. So you can go into any of these things and quit these apps just like that. You know, you click quit and it's gone. So it's going to start, you know, even if it's a little bit of RAM and resources and a little bit of CPU resources, it's still going to shut them down up there. So if you have 100 of them up there, 20 or 30 of those apps running up there in the menu bar, that could be you know, sucking some of your memory and RAM and all that stuff away as well. All right, so last couple of things are, and this is going to be, a lot of people argue this last one, and it's going to be turning off your computer maybe once a week or once, once every couple of weeks at least, all right? So I think at, at, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's a good idea to do it. A lot of people are going to say, oh, it's Linux-based Linux -based or Unix-based, I'm sorry, and it's, you don't need to do this and this and that and the other thing. Long story short, what I recommend doing is not so much for the computer. The computer, if you leave it on, it actually can run processes in the background and things like that to help it. It also kind of stores everything in memory and makes it a little bit faster. So when you reboot it, it's going to be a little bit slower initially until it gets all those things back into its memory. But keep in mind this, that a lot of times there's could be some applications that are doing some weird things to your computer overall causing issues. And this is what this is for, is trying to get that, you know, those issues kind of ironed out by restarting your computer. So it's more for the application versus the actual Mac because Macs don't really need to be shut down. People will put in the comments, I haven't shut mine down for two years and it runs perfectly. And that's, you know, it, it caches things, it does things to make it quicker. And that's not a bad idea also, but you really, if you're having issues with performance and you notice it, that might be an option to try. And then it takes a little bit longer to get that built back up. But once you do, you're usually a little bit better off. All right, the last one is going to be very similar to the other one where people are going to argue both directions. But I'm just going to say something like iCloud or an application that's really running things in the background, like it's syncing things to other files and you know into the cloud and all that kind of stuff. A lot of times those can be running in the background when you don't even know what's going on using resources, using RAM, and, and really causing slowdowns even on the internet. So you have to know what you're actually getting into when you download programs like that. I mean, iCloud can, can move all your images somewhere and it could just cause slowdowns and stuff like that. Granted, it's not that, that common, but I've seen some t in some cases where people get these slowdowns during certain parts of the day. They track it down and they, they track it to a program that's actually running behind the scene processes. So you really want to look for those things and kind of think, what did I download? What am I doing? And that's maybe not the best tip, but it's just something to consider. All right, so we're going to wrap this up. I hope this helped everybody out there a little bit. Again, these are things that could make it appear faster or actually be faster. You can argue both ways, right? I mean, at the end of the day, these are things that I think will help people overall. If you're not that used to a Mac, these may, you know, just take a look at these things and consider them if you're running into problems with a really slow Mac, and they may help you. Hopefully, you guys can leave a comment. Also, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to grow it as fast as I can. It's taken me a lot of years now, a lot of work. So any, any help I can get, definitely appreciate it. And we'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.